We fight. You tell me when I'm being an arrogant son of a bitch, and I tell you when you're being a pain in the ass, which you are 99% of the time. I'm not afraid to hurt your feelings. They have like a two-second rebound rate, and you're back doing the next pain in the ass thing. So what? There is no easy way. No matter what I do, somebody gets hurt. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? And so you might ask, why so dramatic? And let me explain. There are a couple of big reasons why I decided to completely switch off Adobe products and Adobe Creative Cloud. And it's, you know, you probably experienced some of the issues before because I asked you guys the other day exactly if you considered switching. Maybe you swap already your products for other products than Adobe's. And it was clear that a big bulk of people actually either considered it, either unhappy or they basically swap it all together like I just did. And now, you know, there is also a big part of people who are just extremely happy. And those are the creative types. For example, if I would be only in product design, motion graphics, very creative agency work, I would probably wouldn't even consider switching. But if it's purely UX, purely service design, purely customer experience design, something to do with actual pain points, actual human aspects, then you know the solutions, the crafting pixels, pushing pixels left and right, it almost doesn't make sense to use Adobe products anymore. And let me actually give you three reasons, you know, after almost a decade of using Adobe products, we're just like, that's it, I'm done. And so reason number one, why I did the jump. Most of you, if you're, let's say, a senior or a lead, you started this journey over a decade ago or years ago. You probably use something like Macromedia Flash Macromedia Fireworks, you know, all those apps for Adobe acquired them back in the day. And so you remember that old school feeling of, wow, this is an actual powerful app which you can achieve a lot with. Just because Adobe created that big monopoly, I really dislike the centralization of the thing because, you know, it, the cloud became like a suite of different apps which you just must have and you must almost purchase all of it for it to make sense to use because otherwise you miss critical pieces which makes Adobe Cloud what it really is, a powerhouse. Now another reason is the pricing. You know, if you would lead your own team, you would spend, I don't know, let's say if you have 15 people, maybe it's a 10K a year, maybe even more, you would spend that big chunk of money, which for some companies it's nothing. Let's say for creative houses, innovation agencies, that's just, you know, a utility bill nothing really special for others that's big sizable chunk and for me for example when i see you know the bills which we as a ux design team have to pay i think it's necessity but it's also such a shameful necessity when you know that let's say a sketch which is just 100 bucks or so license covers most of the needs and you really just supplement with adobe apps if you do pure ux or ui design rather than you know full-fledged creative stuff to add to a pricing bit, you know, Adobe had their take on, let's say, Adobe XD, which is, you know, an amazing prototyping tool. I never really got into it much. When it was just an MVP of a tool, it didn't really make sense for me to try it out because it was too limited. And so because the tool became so rich in features, now Adobe put a stamp and they're saying you have to pay for Creative Cloud if you want to export your files and some other ridiculous things, which... Now, it doesn't really make sense to use it as a quote-unquote free tool, which was the biggest selling mark for it and the biggest incentive for designers to swap because it was totally free. Now, another reason for the pricing being an issue is that Adobe prices their products very smartly. Let's say buying two apps or paying for two app subscriptions, which for me, it was the last hanging apps where Photoshop, let's say, and Adobe Acrobat and for that, I paid as much as for a whole creative suite combined, which, you know, we know what they're doing. Because if you're creative or close to being a creative, you use at least one or two apps. Otherwise, again, it doesn't make sense to even own it. But you can imagine what a shame it feels like when, let's say, I pay hundreds of pounds every year 
and I use only one or two apps. Uh, next bit is again to do with uh, apps and you know, they're way too clunky for me. They're way too heavy in features. I don't really need much. If I would be a photographer, uh, pure creative, uh, some, someone with motion design, I totally get why you would need that. Even if I really say video editing, I, I just do well with let's say Final Cut, which has very few features, but that's good enough because I want it quick. I want it effective rather than spending days. I'm not producing documentaries, I'm producing YouTube videos, educational videos, things of that nature. And so for professionals or let's say amateur specialists, it's more than good enough. And if, if it comes to UI, UX design, if you still use Photoshop in 2020 to craft UI design, I just feel bad for you. You know, we have so many replacement tools for Adobe tools already. We have sketch for screen design we have envision studio for screen design figma and so with these few massive pain points i've been using adobe for over a decade and and lately i just got so tired that i said okay enough is enough i just don't feel like paying that much money i don't feel like asking my employer to cover the expenses just because i use photoshop every once in a while maybe once every three months Maybe I use Acrobat to make PDFs every couple of weeks, but that ju doesn't justify the actual use. And I totally get it if your, let's say, team uses Adobe CC products. It makes sense because then you actually, it's all about collaboration. And in the end of the day, if your teammates use, let's say, Sketch, but you want to use Figma, you should probably use Sketch first. And then, you know, once you get the critical mass to make a change, then swap to different tool. For product designers, experienced designers, user experience designers, any usability expert or design thinker, almost like it's gonna be a gradual shift towards modular products where you can actually adjust the pricing or buy perpetual licenses, or just have a tool which is very simple, but you can use it in so many instances that it actually makes sense to pay for it. And so this is not a call to action, maybe it is for some, I'm saying goodbye to Adobe only for now. At this point, it doesn't make sense for me to use it. Maybe I'm gonna be back, who knows? Maybe the design team I'm at is actually gonna require for me to use something specific like Adobe XD, but naturally I'm gonna use it because collaboration is everything. But meanwhile, if you like this video, give a like, subscribe to this channel, share with your friends, leave a comment down below if you agree or disagree with me, and as per usual, I'll see you next time.